Hey guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and this is Keenan. I don't know if we've actually had you on for a review in the uh, past. No, we haven't. <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at the Phil World Live Pro L1. This is a camera capture card switcher. Um, it's pretty awesome. Now, you can go online and there's probably a bunch of different videos out there that kind of explain all the functions and settings and how this thing operates. Go check one of those out. Maybe we'll, I'll find one I really like and I'll put it in the description down below. However, I really want to talk about how we use it uh, here at Media Unlocked and honestly, uh, most of it's being used for our podcast for Transparency Fitness Live, which is our fitness related brand that we have. And, uh, and so Keenan's our engineer. He, he, he does all the, uh, all the cords and hooking everything up. I mean, it takes him a good like 45 minutes to an hour to hook the full podcast setup because uh, we, we build out the podcast in our gym and then we do, um, we do the, the live or well, we were doing live, but now we're pre-recording the podcast uh, and then, and then uh, releasing it a week later. So this piece of equipment uh, has kind of been invaluable to us. Oh, it's been the best, yeah. Um, for the simple fact that uh, we do a YouTube version and then we'll do an actual just audio version that we upload to like Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, you, it's on Google. Uh, Google yeah. has a podcasting? Google, yeah, Google Podcast. Yeah. Go Google Podcast. And so this has saved us countless hours of editing because what Keenan can do, he can sit there and set everything up and then he's able to jump between the two cameras that we're running for the podcast back and forth. Uh, and sometimes we add a third camera. Um, and so we're able to really cut down on our editing time because we do the edit live, right? While we're actually recording the podcast. Um, so we've been extremely happy. Now this is a $300 piece of equipment. Um, we were just talking about, we also have the Elgato HD 60S Plus. Yes. Is that, is, did I say that right? It's like a tongue uh, twister. Elgato HD 60. Is it the S Plus? S Plus, yes. Yeah, the S Plus. Um, so that's almost a $200 product. This is $300. Um, and with the Elgato, the drawback is that we can only plug in one camera at a time. Mm -hmm. um, with, with this, we can plug in up to four different cameras and jump between those four cameras. Uh, again, it's, it's like I said, it's, you literally have four capture cards and you also have an HDMI out, um, which we're gonna talk about how we use that to really get high quality video during the podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so the other thing to mention, <laughs> this actually happened uh, <laughs> uh, three days ago. Yeah, three days ago. Yeah. Um, so we do the podcast in my gym. I don't have AC in the gym. We have to keep the garage door down because uh, of all the noise coming in so that we get the highest quality audio during our podcast. Um, we made it 35 or 45 minutes into the uh, podcast. Yeah, like 33.4. He knows yeah. exactly to the second yeah. before both Sony cameras went down to overheating. Uh, our uh, recorder, um, which we're going to pull out and show you guys here in a second. That's really how this this piece of equipment with our uh, Ninja Blade Five, I think it's called, yeah, uh, really, really cool. makes the podcast amazing. Really good. Uh, so the recorder went down. Both the cameras went down, like overheating. Mm -hmm. uh, the Phil World Live Pro L1 was really hot, perfect. But <laughs> but it didn't stop. It yeah, was still doing its job. Perfect. Um, another issue that we ran into when we were going live was uh, glitchiness. Um, pretty much we are plugging this directly into, so you can plug this directly into the computer. It works just like a capture card. Mm -hmm. So like right into Streamlabs. Yes. Um, and then it will just do all the switching right from Streamlabs. You can do it right here on the Live Pro. Um, but we found that we were having some glitchiness issues and I was a little worried that it might have been the Live Pro L1. Um, another thing that we were worried about is that it's 1080p 60 output signal wasn't really that great of high quality. Um, so two things that we found out. One, we were having, like Streamlabs, this is too clunky. It really is too clunky yes. for the use of this uh, with this deck. So we, we found out that the Live Pro 1 was not the issue when it came to glitchiness. It was something to do with Streamlabs uh, that we just constantly were having issues with. So we, that's why we gave up on the Live. The second thing was, is that when we were using our field recorder to uh, pass through the signal through this into the field recorder to record the video and then cut it up later. 
um, we found we were getting these little lines um, across the screen that were being sent into the recorder and it was actually being recorded that way. So what we ended up doing is doing a little research and we found out that the HDMI cables that we were using uh, were not the best HDMI cables. So anytime there's, uh, so we had to order new ones, but think of this, when you put an HDMI cable, let's say into, uh, into the input yeah. here, um, if we're moving the camera at all and the, and the cord is moving and it's not very secure, it causes this weird signal to go through into the field recorder and causes this weird line. So we found ordering better HDMI cables fixed that issue. Um, so we're, I was a little skeptical at first using this because we had run into some issues, but this puts out great 1080p60 into our field recorder, beautiful quality video. Um, so all the things that I thought it was having issues with, not whatsoever. They were third. They were other issues uh, that I thought were related with this. So I'm going to let Keenan talk a little bit about how he uses it. A um, few things before we dive into that. Uh, so like I said, you have one HDMI uh, out, and then you have three inputs. So you can hook up or four inputs. So you can hook up up to four cameras. Um, on the on the side, you've got a a LAN in um, the USB 3.0. I wish it was um, uh, it it was. Uh, USB-C, it's not USB-C, so I'd love that the next one to come in, and you have audio in and out. Now, with the audio in and out, it's only one eighth inch, it's not quarter, it's not XLR, I would absolutely love quarter or XLR, um, but you know, you do have audio in and out, so you can monitor it and you can get audio directly into the unit. Uh, you can control everything from the deck here, um, and then you've got just your basic uh, quarter inch uh, thread for, you know, if you wanna hook this into some kind of mount. Um, other than that, that is the, the deck right there. It's small, it can handle heat, and I'm yes. going to let Keenan talk a little bit about it here. All right, so um, the way that I've used this uh, has been very straightforward, actually. Um, when we were doing a live stream style, um, it was very convenient having both feeds in the two, one and two uh, camera section to switch between. Real simple s switching. Um, a couple things that I might just not know how to use, or maybe that I like just need to just figure out a little bit more is that when I was switching to a signal, um, one, the other signal would light up and I can probably show you that when we actually plug it in, but it is more convenient than having a, um, what would you call those things? A... What? Like a single capture card? A single capture card and then having a mix and having like a... Mixing, mixing it in Streamlabs, right? Yeah. Where mixing you're jumping it, between the cameras. Mixing it in Streamlabs or having to buy another unit for about like the same price as this, like a Stream Deck where it has like a bunch of little buttons oh, to yeah. like switch between. So like you get all of this, you get all of that functionality of like two units in one with the with extra HDMI ports, so you can do a multi-cam setup really easily. And I really like it because if I wanted to say I'm on camera one, I can cut to camera two, then I can set camera three while I'm still on camera two, then when I cut back, it'll go to camera three, and it's real convenient. And if we were, if we were using it for audio, I could have the audios and I could adjust the volumes right here. Um, but, saves a lot of time. I don't know how to use Premiere. Right now I'm actually learning. <laughs> We're going to be actually... He's learning his, he's getting his first Premiere lesson right after this review. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to learn how to use Adobe Premiere so he can do the audio cut-ups um, from the podcast. But not knowing how to use Premiere and if you want to cut a video, super simple. Like, Oh, right. So in theory, all we're going to have to do is go back through the podcast and cut out sections where we took a break, uh, like when everything overheated, except for this, and we had to stop for 10 minutes, bring the equipment inside, let it cool down, take it back out to the garage. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so this, for us, this has been invaluable. The other thing I want to mention for all my wedding videographers out there, anybody that does live events, if you happen to use any of the Hollyland Mars Pro systems. There's the 400, I think the 600. Um, the really cool thing is that I can plug in up to two or three cameras. I have, I think, three sets of the Hollyland uh, uh, wireless transmitters and receivers. 
Yes. So you see where I'm going with this, yeah. right? Yeah. So I can plug in all the, I could plug in three different uh, receivers into three different cameras. So three different, I could plug in all three receivers into here. I could have three different cameras plugged into the transmitters. And now during a ceremony, we could actually do live video or do a really nice cut so that I don't have to go back into Premiere, spend three or four hours yeah. cutting up that ceremony video. Um, mainly you would probably have one person mobile, two, two cameras on sticks, um, and then the second person would be sitting on the, on the Live Pro L1, and they would be cutting everything up as the ceremony is happening. So then it gets recorded into the Ninja Blade, which we're about to set this up and show you guys. But then it would get recorded into here, and we'd have a pretty much finalized cut that we can use right out of the honestly as a person if you do events at all like this is a go-to yeah you have more than one camera at all just go and and there are some other options out there um but i think for the price point this is the best option that i've come across mm -hmm. uh there are some thousand and fifteen hundred dollar units that i think have actual wi-fi built in and oh, it has streamlabs built into the unit oh, nice. so think of this having streamlabs built into it and it, it mainly as long as you have wi-fi you can run the whole entire streaming, I think, off one of these units. Yeah, so cool. if Phil World wants to make one of those, mm -hmm. I would absolutely love to review it for you guys um, because wow. uh, that would be, that's the next level of like streaming, right? And we're, that's where we're going, right? A lot of streaming, a lot of live events, mm -hmm. uh, all thanks to uh, COVID from last year. A lot of people are realizing yeah. that if this happens again, how am I gonna get my content, my media out there? And this is one of those ways. Um, so let's set it up and kind of show people how everything works. Um, so what we did, because we only got both of our cameras we're using now, so uh, we just decided to bring out our little GoPro. Uh, and the battery for the Ninja, I think this is called the Atomos Ninja Blade 5. Um, so it only records uh, at, I think it's 1080p at 60, which this is what this puts out, 1080p at 60. Um, so when and if, Live, you know, Phil World makes a new version of this that's 4K. Uh, hopefully they send that to me as well to test. Uh, I will probably upgrade the uh, Atomos to one of their 4K units, which is a few extra hundred dollars. And then that way we could be recording 4K video. Um, the nice thing about this is it puts out Apple ProRes 422, I think, um, making it super easy for, uh, for editing in Premiere because uh, Premiere loves Apple ProRes 422 far as a codec. Um, and it's a very high quality codec too. So I really, really like that. So uh, let's see here. This goes, this goes into, yeah. So yep, output here. Literally Keenan has used this more than I have in the last month of us testing yeah. this out. Uh, go to in, okay. Mm -hmm. So he actually has a better, better handle on how all this works. All right, and then, uh, yep, that will go into the GoPro here. Yep, that right there. All, right. All right, and is that on? Okay, now I just got to turn the GoPro on and yep. it should connect. Yep, and then let's see if we got signal. Yep, yep. so if you guys can see, we've got signal from the GoPro. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really easy to set up. But so again, this is kind of what we're doing. So uh, I don't even put a card. I just make sure that there is battery. So for the uh, Sony cameras, I bought uh, a battery that plugs into the wall for it. So I don't have to worry about changing out batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that like uh, that first week you came and like the batteries kept dying? We, we just it, did not think it about it. the worst. Yeah, so the batteries, uh, on, uh, on top of overheating issues, the batteries kept dying. So I ordered these little units that go into the cameras. Mm -hmm. Um, so the really cool thing about this is, so the camera goes into the Live Pro L1. Yeah. The Live Pro L1 sends the out signal into my monitor here. Yeah. The really cool thing about this monitor is, like I said, it records 1080, 60, yeah. uh, an Apple ProRes. And then what happens is it goes right onto this hard drive right here. Mm -hmm. We plug the hard drive into the computer. We back up the footage and then we edit the video. Um, and we have found this to be the best way to get high quality audio and video. Now, of course, we have the audio. We don't run audio into here. We, un we run the audio directly into the computer. Yes. And then what are you using to uh, capture the audio? Audacity to capture the audio? So 
he uses Audacity to capture the audio. What we do is your basic clap, and when we just sync the audio up uh, with Audacity. Um, and it, even the audio sounds better than if you, I was running it through Streamlabs. So Streamlabs somehow even makes the audio sound worse. Um, so that's why we're using Audacity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, into the here, and then we'll, we'll sync everything up here. Mm -hmm. So for podcasting, for live events, as of right now, $300, best thing on the market, at least for our uses here at Media Unlocked oh, yeah, yeah, sure. and, uh, and Transparency Fitness Live. So we have been absolutely ecstatic with this unit. We've been super happy. And, uh, you know, this is like, I could not, I would not want to do the podcast without this now. Yeah, Keenan would be doing so much more work. He would quit after like week one. He'd be like, oh, no, this is too much work. If, if we didn't have this... I would have to basically take both angles and cut it as and I... And if we add that third angle in sometimes... Oh, yeah. That would be a whole third angle you'd have. So, so this is so much more work. Yeah, because if there was just like a third angle, I would just be like, okay, camera one, camera two. I could click camera three. That would... So then I could switch. It would hit camera three. Then if I want to go back to camera two, I hit that. And then it should take me to two. I could hit one there. Now, if you guys notice, the red means that is what the red camera is, is live, yes. right? The red is the camera that's live. The green blinkings are the ones you can activate. So there's only uh, so one. So it's blinking. That's the camera you're going to cut to next when you slide. Yes, yes. Okay. So basically, there's only uh, one and two. It It's perfect because it's not too much, but... The blinking shows you which camera you have that's ready to be activated. So you'll switch to, it'll show you. So then if I wanted to go to camera four, switch there, it'll go to four instead. Now, the one thing I think you're realizing now doing this, well, you've done this for like a month and a half now, yeah. uh, is uh, you've got to be very vigilant. Uh, <laughs> you got to be very vigilant on watching the camera. So there is a lot on his shoulders in the aspect of like knowing when to cut um so usually it's just me and another guest right so he just kind of cuts to the person that's talking um but say something goes wrong on the computer or cameras overheat yeah. or like things that could distract keenan mm -hmm. right for a second um you know he's got to be vigilant being able to again engineer everything make sure everything's running smooth take care of any issues that may happen during the podcast but still be very very vigilant on keeping an eye on that to switch cameras because that is our only cut. So I'm not recording video from these from my cameras. Um, I, I think that it's less abusive to my Sony cameras. Honestly. Um, if, if the, again, all this, this is just recording everything. So the cameras aren't recording at all. They're just, they're just turned on and they're, and they're pointed at the person and then all of the, all the footage just goes right into here and we record it, um, which is fantastic. So anyways, guys, that is our uh, review on the Phil World Live Pro L1. It's 300 bucks. Of course, as always, guys, we'll add a link uh, over here, here and then one in the description and one at the end of the video. Keenan, any final thoughts for you on this unit? Um, if, I had, if I had a lot of cameras, I would get one. I don't do photography or videography like that. The most I do is streaming, but like I would get one of those if I got a second camera. Yeah, no, oh, and, and I definitely agree with you. So uh, it's been easier on Keenan again. As an engineer, as our audio and video and overall engineer for the podcast, uh, you know, I, it just it has really made things easier for Keenan and myself. Uh, it also saves extra setup time because we're not setting up two or three different uh, capture cards, and I don't have $500 in three different capture cards because. I'm not gonna buy the cheapest $75 capture card pretty much outside of Phil World and Elgato. Uh, there's one other brand I like. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't go to another brand, and to be honest, those, those are much more expensive capture cards. So um, yeah, so super happy with it. As always, guys, we'll catch you next time. Let's go.